What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? In today's video, I'm going to show you how to work on a Yamaha EF2000ISV2 inverter. I have two of them here. For the sake of the video, I'm only going to fix one of them. But I am going to fix both of them off camera. So anyways, I'm going to show you guys how to get on this and where to start. And we're going to start by taking off this back cover. One, one two... Phillips. I think that's all it's going to require for this one. Okay, once we remove the two Phillips, it's as simple as just pulling it off. Actually, with inverters, ain't nothing simple on these. But it just pulls right off. If you look here, you got one thing. This is um, pressure fitted, and then you got another one right here. Those go in this one and this one respectively. So now from here, the good thing about this inverter, let me get in close so I can show you, is that to be honest, this carburetor, getting it, getting it to it is pretty easy, but getting it out is a pain. I think what we can do for sure is work on let me see if we can do this the fast way. I believe this air filter box is held on by one bolt. So if we can remove this air filter box, get up under there, I can get my carburetor needle up in there. So let's see if we can do that. Forgive me, my tripod is elsewhere, but we will see if we can't get to that bolt. Okay, like I said, it's a 10 millimeter. I've got a pair of pliers just in case. And I believe that's the only thing holding on this air filter box. I could be mistaking. No, that's it besides this tube here. Oh, no, there's one more. One more bolt. So what you're going to do... So you're going to take your Phillips or your flathead, unscrew the air filter cover, remove the air filter, and from there, we can get in there and get one more 10 millimeter. Let me show you that real quick. Wa-bam! Now the air filter box comes off. So I'm going to keep all my air filter stuff together. We're going to take a quick peek at this just to see what we're working with. So I'm going to remove this um, intake part right here. Not that you know the intake from the air. That's a 10 millimeter there and a 10 millimeter on the other side. So we're going to do that with the hand tool. That way we can actually get in there. And these are pretty easy. So once you get them loose, you can just hand spin them. Now that comes off like that. Pretty easy. Now from here, I could take a look at the carburetor. Now I'm gonna show you why. Well, why don't you just pull it off and clean it? Well, because I'd have to remove the other side, take out one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, like 30 fucking screws. Take this all apart because as you notice, the stepper motor on here is hitting against the gas can. The gas can or the gas tank or whatever is per, is fully in there. Now, I could probably get in there with an offset screwdriver, unscrew that screw, and unscrew one back here right there. But that would be way too much time and effort. When from here, what we can do is make sure the gas is on the off position. It is and get from the bottom with a 10 millimeter on the bowl. And let's let that gas drain out. It ain't gonna hurt nothing. 
no electronics under it or anything. And if you look here, you could probably see how yellow that is. And it smells pretty stale. So that's some old gas. But now I'm going to show you guys this. But now that I got here, you can see that that, that is pure gummed up with that green stuff. So if I clean this side jet out and spray up in there, right here, this little side jet, you can get out with a 10 mil or with a flathead right there. We can get that out and um, I can clean that out, clean this out. And then I guarantee this thing will run like it's brand new. So I'm going to go ahead and show you that little jet. We'll see if we get a better look on it, how gummed up it is. Let me get a flathead. Okay, I got a flathead screwdriver. We should be able to get in here. Oh my God, that is bad. And I dropped it and it's brass, so don't lose it because it's not magnetic. Now, I don't know how good this is gonna come up on camera. But you can see just how gummed up that little guy is. So if we clean him and um, use these badass things that I always have a link in my description for on any video, these little jet cleaners, they go real thin. They go even thinner than that. I love these things so much. I never really need the big ones, but with the little ones, all we got to do is straight up just go in there and go like that through it. And you can see it's going through. You can even clean up the top. Just pick in there a little bit. And now what you'll do is we're going to spray that with a little bit of carburetor cleaner. Now I can tell for a fact that that jet is clear. I'm going to see if I can't make that noticeable on camera. Yeah, you guys can see right through that. Beautiful. So now I know that this jet is clear. So now from here, we take our carburetor cleaner. We get a little straw on there. And now from here, what we're going to do is we're going to slightly bend the straw up. And as you can see, it's going to spray straight up. So that's perfect. Now from here, I can get into the carburetor. And I can see it's coming out the intake or the front of the carburetor where the choke is. So that means the carburetor cleaner is going up through there. And I believe that jet is what was making it not run. So now on the front face of the carburetor, there's two holes. We can put our straw in there too. Give a few sprays in. And I think we should be golden. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to screw it back in the jet by hand to start it. And with these brass, when you put it back in with the screwdriver, you go lightly just until the screwdriver stops. Do not put any more force than just that. Matter of fact, you could just do it by hand if you wanted to all the way. But see, now I'm going to go, go. The screwdriver stopped. So I'm not torquing it down. I'm not doing any of that fancy stuff. Then I'm going to put the bowl back on. We give the bowl a little spray. Perfect. I'm going to check the gas in here. Seems a little stale. I might add some fresh gas to it. But I'm going to make sure when I put the carburetor on that I have easy access or the customer is going to have easy access to drain this bowl for the future. So I'm not cleaning this again every single year. But you got to drain your gas out when you're done with it, when you're going to store it for longer than three months. 
any longer than three months, and even non-ethanol gas will evaporate, and it'll still leave behind residue. So people are going to say, oh, it's just ethanol gas, ethanol gas. But to be honest, non-ethanol gas evaporates and goes bad as well. Just ethanol is a little worse, but it's cheaper, and it has easier access. That's why everybody uses it. Now, from here, we can put on our fucking penis tube. And, yeah, it will put it back on the air filter. And before I actually put the panel back on, we'll see if it runs. So now why I'm putting it back together, we'll go ahead and turn on the gas and turn on the engine. Because it's the same on-off for both. Once I can hand start these, there we go. And the reason I turn on the gas is I'm checking for leaks. I'm checking to make sure that everything is good and nothing's leaking. And then I will make sure that there's gas in the bowl by the time I'm all said and done. As a matter of fact, to start it, to test it, I don't even have to put the air filter back on. Just to give it a test run. So we're going to just go ahead and not put the air filter back on. And I'll put that on last. And I can do all that off camera. Making sure I saw a few drips, but I think it was just for me shaking. <clears throat> Pull it off. I'm going to check to see if there's fuel in here. If there is, that means I'm going to give it a start now. And it looks clear. It looks clear. So that's good. And it doesn't smell. So ugh. now let me make sure we're in camera range here. Like I said, my tripod is in my wife's car. I broke my GoPro screen. Oh, I didn't. It looked like it was cracked, though, for a second. Anyways, let's see if this thing starts, huh? This all in one take, too. That's pretty good, huh? Other than me taking that off. So, engine on. No, that's eco. Eco off, engine on, gas on. Chokes on. Now I say we actually try to fire this thing up. I yanked that one a little too hard. Come on, baby. Oh, there it goes. There it goes, baby. Woo! That's what I'm fucking talking about, ladies and gentlemen. Makes it. That's what I'm fucking talking about. The Yamaha. You made a good inverter where the carburetor's in a good position to get easy access to it. I fucking love that Yamaha. Thank you for that. Let's see. Yeah, buddy. Oh. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to do the same exact thing for that Yamaha inverter right there. Same exact one. Now, what he does is he links these together to make a total of 4,000 watts. So, and they're quiet. They're perfect. It even says twin tech, twin tech on it, so they're meant to, like, connect them. Champion has one, too. I don't know if you could do it with... I think Honda has one. I don't know if Predator quite has where you can easily... I know for a fact Yamaha and Champion does. But damn! Things running. Let's see if it starts one more time. And that wasn't a fluke. Baby! 
I love that. I love that. So, if you made it all the way at the end of the video, make sure you hit that like button. Also, hit that subscribe button. It helps me out more than anything. And um, check out the links in the description, of course, as always. If you didn't like this video, well, have a good day. Well, I guess we'll figure it out next time, huh?